Hi everyone, this is Deborah. Welcome back. Today I've got some old things and some new things to share with you. I'm starting with this book that I picked up at the op shop called Tales of Rose Street. And it's all about the little signs that hang above a shop to indicate what it is. And obviously Rose Street must be a street somewhere. I haven't read the book yet. I only just got it yesterday. And you can see it's got beautiful font through it, but I also love the pictures that are in it here. See, they're all over the pages, all these cute little pictures indicating these um, what the shop was about. And I know that when I travel and I see these signs above shops, I'm always taking pictures of them because I really love it. So this was quite good that I managed to find this book and it just looked interesting And when I picked it up. And then I thought, oh, I love the actual font. And then the pictures and the story are an added bonus. So I'm going to read that one before I do anything with it. Not a huge book, but it's still very, very cute. And it's quite large this way. So that's that old thing. Now the new things are some new things from Stamperia. So this is Voyager's Fantastiques Collectibles. Now they did a Voyager's Fantastiques range of paper and I had a lot of that and I used a lot of that and I was a bit sick of it I must admit but I don't have any more now and then I saw this little thing that was in the shop when I went out the other day and it's a 6 by 12 inch paper so it's quite long I have to put it this way so you can see so it's 12 this way and then 6 and obviously it's vertical so I'll move it back so you can see so this is the back of the front cover and then you've got all these beautiful images so it's all from the Voyager's Fantastics range although that looks a bit more like Lady Vagabond to me but anyway that's the original Voyager's Fantastics and the backs are beautiful as well as usual I love these balloons so I just thought this was a bit interesting to see uh, the paper pad in a 12 by 6 inches and I do know that Tim Holtz has bought out paper pads that are an odd size. I think they're 9 or 10 inches. Got some nice maps there. And of course the gorgeous trains. And the tags which are tiny because they're on half the size of the 12 by 12. So that's very cute to have some little tiny tags. And of course clocks. Can't go wrong with clocks. And then some quotes. There's quite good quotes there. I don't often like quotes, but if you don't like the quotes, you can always use the back of the piece. And I'll show you the backs now. That's the inside of the back cover. And then if I turn it around, you see that's the back cover. Let me just get that in shot. And that's the back of the tag. So, you know, if you didn't like the quotes and things on the front, you can use that. And that's the back of the quote page. I always love that paper really good for journaling and the back of the tags obviously and some pretty papers this is another favorite paper the color in there is just gorgeous that duck egg blue and lots of cogs on the back of that and this too is really pretty there's one more yep and so that is from Stamperia called Collectibles, Voyages Fantastiques. I don't know if they have any more. I only saw this one in terms of the style, but I'm sure if they don't, they'll probably be bringing them out. And then I got two packs of chipboard. Just excuse me while I crunch a little bit. <laughs> I've pre-opened them to try and stop the noise a little bit. Now, these are die cuts, and again, this is Voyager's Fantastiques die cuts. And it's all the same thing, but obviously in a die cut. So plenty of clocks. Look at this. And I'm really enjoying these die cuts, I've got to say. That's why I bought a couple more packets, because I think that they're quite good. And I like the thickness of them. So you can raise them up, you can have them as a standalone um, journaling spot that you can slide in tag because they are a nice weight 
more little sayings. There's a train, there's a train in the big and the little going two different directions, so that's cute. Some sayings. Cabinet of Curiosities, that's nice. And some little sort of tag shaped things too. And of course the little bicycle, or the big bicycle. Some more sayings, clocks and cogs and wings. The pair of the wings that come, you know, are in the paper pack as well. So that's that one. And then I'll just push that out of the way. And then I have another one. Excuse the noise while I get it out of the packet. And this is from one of the new paper ranges. I was trying to be really quiet by having everything pre-opened, but it's backfired a little bit. Sorry about that, because it's stuck to this packet, the um, sticky on the packet that I put it into. Never mind, I tried. So this is one of the new paper packs, which is called Atelier de Arts or Atelier des Arts. But anyway, so that's that. And I didn't buy the paper pack. I bought the die cuts instead, the chipboards and die cuts instead. So I'll just show you what's in this one. And it's got these fabulous brushes. Look at that. Isn't that lovely? And little brushes, all sorts of brush sizes and turn those over for you and I think there were more brushes actually then you've got the signs look at the paint it's got paint bottles that have been squeezed aren't they gorgeous and a pot of pe um, pencils and paint brushes there and got the old-fashioned wooden peg and some more brushes what's this oh that's like a color wheel and then it's got the the big thing it's even got the cutout for that you know, the hand, the thumb hole for that. A clock and more paint tubes. And look at this. This is lovely. Suitcases. And a pair of scissors. And that's also got the cutouts in it. I won't push that out right now. And then it's got this, which is like a little vignette of arty things. And what are these? Oh, more paint tubes. I love the paint tubes because they're all squished like you, you know, when you've been using them. And another paintbrush and oh a cup of tea of course I'm having a cup of tea at the moment so that's appropriate a cup of tea and then a little square butterfly some little buttons more buttons yep yeah, more buttons and then another paintbrush and a tag with some pencils and more buttons and a little key thing what's this that's a little bottle and then you've got a frame and it's got the push out in the center so it's both the frame and the center piece you can use and then another little thing and then a flower so I thought that that was quite nice that lot of stuff that I bought and I wasn't buying anything of course but all the new stuff's coming out so it's really hard to resist but I was really good because I there were three new pa actually there were six new paper packs that Stamperia have bought out and I didn't buy any of them as you can see no paper packs because I've got that much paper but I did buy these the chipboards and of course these because they were different and I wanted to show them to um, show them to you so there you go that's um that's the lot and I hope you think that they're as nice as what I do. Now I'm going to move on to something else. Now I'm going to make some pockets. So I've cut some 12 by 12 paper in half. And then I've scored it along the bottom at the half inch. And then I've scored it in thirds so that it makes the um, three, three sections. I've got a half inch score on this end and then evenly across. And I'm just sort of doing them in a production line. So I cut them all and then I went through and scored them all. And now I'm just burnishing them all because I think I've got half a dozen or so here. I think I had three or four papers out because I wanted to make a few more. See if I can get some done. And hopefully they're going to work because I've already scored them. If not, I guess I'll cut them apart and use them for something else. 
but I'm not very good at production line stuff, I must say. I don't know why, maybe it stifles my creativity trying to do everything the same. But I thought today I'd give it a go because sometimes you just want a pile of pockets rather than one individual pocket. So if you do it this way, I guess you get more of the same thing. I think I've got a couple more to go. So I'm just looking at some of the lines on these. I could have scored them a bit better, but I was worried about going through the paper because occasionally I accidentally score through the paper. And the other thing I made sure when I was scoring them is that I had the image up. So I cut, because these are directional images, I cut them in half horizontally because I wanted the image to be like that on the pocket. I didn't cut them vertically. And then when I scored them, I made sure I scored my half inch on the bottom and then I was able to get the images all going the same way because that's what I want. I don't want upside down images. So last one, just get that scored. So I think I've got six. I did three pieces of paper. And then the next thing would be to cut and punch them. Now I haven't yet worked out where I'm going to punch them. I do have a bit of a prototype here on an old piece that I was mucking around with. And I'm thinking that I'm going to punch that at the front on this first one. So how I'm going to do that, production line again, make sure all my images are up the right way. Although these do have things that go on this side as well, but I guess I'm more about making sure that my half inch score is on the left, which it is now. I'm not going to punch them all at once because they wouldn't fit through the punch like that. But I am going to try and mark them all at once if I can. So just taking my ruler and pencil and measuring across at the, these are three and a half inches. So I need to be at the four, um, three and a half. So that would be two, one and one and the, three quarters. That's right, isn't it? You shall measure from the edge because that'll be easier. So they're four inches. So one and three quarters plus a half an inch, which is two and a quarter. Does that sound right? How's your math this morning? I'm just going to check that that's in the centre. What have I got there? I've got one and one and three quarters and then one and three quarters. Is that the fold? It looks about right. Okay, so what I'm going to do to make it easier than what I was trying to do, I'm going to punch the first one out and hopefully it's landed in the right spot. Pretty good. And then I'm going to use the first one as the template to cut the others. So I'm just going to mark on it like this. I'm not going to actually punch it at the same time. As long as they're sort of in the same spot, they don't have to be exact. I get that sort of in the center. At least it's a way of getting something done without just, you know, sitting there wondering if I'm punching it in the right spot. So next is the punch on this side. Kind of get that in the middle. I've never had much luck in punching more than one or two sheets at the same time. I mean the punch probably isn't made to do that. It's not an industrial punch, it's just a craft punch. But it seems to work on one fine, so that's what I'm sticking with. Okay, that's done. Now the next step would be to see where I'm going to put the next thing. So that's going to have one there. And then I probably want one here as well, I think. So again, I need to measure that. So if I take this and put it on that line where the score line is, and then I can put that there. And that should be in the center. That looks like it's in the center. So again, I'm just using the 
previous one. In fact, I'll punch that out first. It was a lot easier once I punched it. I don't know if you struggle with doing things in bulk. I think it's, um, it's difficult, isn't it? Now, I'm making sure those score lines are in the same spot. It looks a bit weird because I've got quite a large piece on here because when I did the three and a half inch pockets you're going to end up with a large so when you're putting your stuff your line like that it does look a bit strange it looks like you should be punching further to the right hand but I'm trusting my measurements and crossing my fingers at the same time okay let's get this one done and I think it's saving time I don't know I'm just, you know, hoping it's saving me time to get some pockets done in bulk and have them ready to go in my stash. There's one more over here. I guess six isn't really bulk, you know. Probably need to do 20 to consider it bulk. But it's a start. And then I'm going to punch this. Now, you don't have to do the notches if you don't want. Because I put that pencil line on there and I can barely see it because of the dark paper. That's it. But I like notches. I think notches make it easier to get things in and out of what you're, you know, in and out of your pocket. Much easier. Okay, let's just try and get that in there for a start. So this is going to take two tags or whatever it is that I decide to put in them. Okay, my punching's done. Now I have to do my cutting. So when I put the score lines on, I need to cut so that I don't have a whole heap of stuff in the way when I go to use it. So that's a matter of just cutting to the corner where the two score lines meet. And then of course here as well, because this is going to be folded over. And so you want this cut. So I just fold it like that and clip it. See how that worked and again I'll fold it and clip it you just have to make sure you can see where that score line is when you're doing that and clip it here and then I also like to do one at the top so we don't get all that bulk at the top so that will be folded up and glued together now so I'm just seeing if that's going to be okay so that's how it'll go and the bottoms will come up. So I will just do the others now. So I'm production lining. And you're probably wondering why I didn't just cut straight across and I've got to tell you I haven't had great success at doing that. Usually I cut too much off if I'm doing that. I'm just trying to find what the score line is. There it is. It'll be easier if I hold it this way and Put it into the light because the eyes aren't like they used to be. As you get older, of course, your eyesight diminishes. I used to have fantastic eyesight. No longer, unfortunately. And one up here. And I just have to take my time and be a bit slower than I used to be, which is frustrating. So I find if you cut straight across the fold, this one at the bottom, the angle is too big for it. That's just my opinion. That's why I cut that in two stages. Which, you know, when you're making in bulk, you probably, or a production line, it probably doesn't save, you know, it takes more time, but it's what I prefer to do. So, Sunday morning here. You're probably not seeing this. If you watch it when it first goes up until Tuesday, which is when I, I will put it up. But it is Sunday morning in Brisbane. And I've just got up not long ago and thought I'll run down and I'll make a video. <laughs> Grabbed a cup of tea on the way through the kitchen and I'll make this and then I'll go and have some breakfast. So I was looking at people doing things in bulk on the YouTube last night, and particularly um, Shabby Dabby Doodah. Is that how you say it? Shabby Dabby Doodah. 
I watch her, Tina I think her name is, and she's really good at making things in bulk. Unfortunately, I'm not. <laughs> but it's really fun watching other people make things, especially when they're really good at making things in bulk. I don't watch that many YouTube videos anymore, but I just don't have time. I try and catch up with some of them, but last night I thought I'll watch a few before I go to sleep. So that's why this morning I'm inspired to make some bulk things. And I must say, I was watching Roxy last night. Rachel from Roxy Creations and I was watching something because I'm doing some well I've only done one so far but I want to do some of her weekly challenges and she was using um, the Tim Holtz paper not this one this one's memorandum but the other one which I can't remember the name of and she covered it all with book page because she didn't like it so I put a left her a message to go I nearly cried when I saw you doing that which I did. I was like, oh no, what's she doing? I thought, oh, she's using Tim Holtz paper and then she proceeded to cover the lot. I was like, no, no. <laughs> anyway, she just, she said it was too grungy for her and she left me a comment this morning saying, no, it was just, you know, for her, it's way too grungy to use the, the Tim Holtz paper like that. So she used it as a base and she covered everything up, which was, you know, interesting. Now, I want to get my pockets correct. So this one here is going to be the flip out pocket. So when you fold it over, you're gonna have your notch there. And this one is going to be the one that you stick in your book. So I don't need to put any glue on that one yet because this one goes into the book. Now, what I've just realized is that I've got this here, but if I cut that, oh, no, I don't think I wanna do that. So you would just put some glue down here and across here and that would stick into your book and then this one here becomes an actual pocket. So I'll stick this one down. I'm just using my Couture Creations glue this morning. Now this is going to have two tabs at the bottom and that's fine. Doesn't really matter if it does have two tabs or not. So that's, that's the pocket. I'll do a couple of others and I'm going to decorate them as well. So to remember that I don't need to put any glue on that inside one, I'm folding it out onto the table like this so that I know that this is the only one. This one with the larger, larger piece on the right, it doesn't get glue until you put it into your journal. So that's why I'm just not putting, just folding it like that because otherwise, no doubt, I will be sticking it on by accident and that won't be very good. And these two go together. So I think they're coming together fairly easily. And if everything keeps going, I think it's pretty good, but I need to make sure that I don't miss anything. And over there. And this is really lovely paper. I'm not sure how anyone could cover up my Tim Holtz paper, but there you go. Now, if I wanted to, I could put something down on the other side of them so that they'd be pre prepped as a pocket and I could just glue them into a journal. So I could create another piece that sits on here. I may do that, I'm not sure yet. But you've got your pocket and then you've got your pocket that flips out. And of course now I have to put some decoration on them because why not? So, of course I've got my paper dolls out. I don't know why you expected anything less, really, if you were thinking that I weren't wasn't going to use my paper dolls. Think again. In fact, I've got my baseboard dolls out because they're really cute and they're not too thick. And often I find that it's, you know, to try and think of things to use them on. And I've also got some old quote things here. So I do have these. So I'm just trying to fold this because this is how it will look in the journal.
and I'm wondering if I can put some of these down. I just want to show that red cross a little bit across there. I'm not going to put anything on the inside of them, I'm just going to leave them how it is. I don't have to use just the baseboard dolls. I do have some paper dolls out as well. I like this chap with the dog. And he's a good scale for the actual, the actual pocket. He's quite a good scale for it. And I put him on the left because he looks better on the left than the right because he's tall and of course the dog's little. I think it just adds a tiny little bit more to the pocket, doesn't it? from being a plain pocket into being slightly more decorative and that's kind of why I thought that I would put some things down like this. I'll put this lady on here with the little boy. I don't think I need a quote on this one. I don't have to put a quote on every one. I just want to keep the number 42 down here. I don't want to put that over the top of that. And I should have put this down before I put her on because the happily is going to go underneath. It needs to go underneath. I just have to move her up a little bit. Luckily, I can pull her up. The glue wasn't quite finished setting. I'll stick some more glue on her and then I'll put her back kind of where she was just up a tiny bit and it's fine right all right so that is my six pockets let's get them back oh I think I've made more have I let's see so I've got one two no obviously flap out three four Oh no, there's six. Yes, yeah, so I did three pieces of paper and did six pockets. And I think that they are fine. You know, I'm quite happy with those. I seem to be a bit zoomed in on my camera today. But anyway, hopefully I've captured all that. And uh, you've seen what I've done. And that's it. So enjoy the rest of your day. And I will see you in the next video. This is Deborah. Cheers. <music>